Ramon videos number 214. How to build an elliptical arch with brick of manual elaboration and with exposed face placed with prepared dry mortar M7.5. Video created and owned by Ramon de Guadara y Parira. Traditional official bricklayer first class. Construction technician. Member of the National Network of Traditional Construction Masters. First part. Step by step. This is the place where we will make an elliptical arch. We are going to place the template. To do this we put supports on both sides and With the help of some wedges we will place it at the necessary height. It is recommended that we always have wedges, whether wooden or plastic, of similar size to the ones we are going to use. We have already placed the second support. We have supplemented both with two fine bricks, but we will remove one of them from each side. Now we will place the wedges. It is important to use the wedges to easily remove the template at the end of the arch. If we did not put the wedges, the arch supports would be very pressured. And to remove them would probably have to be broken. The wedges on the back are placed to prevent it from moving. We already have the reference to be able to place those in the front. We take out a thin brick as we have done the other side and this is where we are going to place the wedges. Care must be taken to ensure that the template is well seated and that it cannot be moved. The front part of the template can be completely vertical with the level. This frontal surface will serve as a guide for other templates that we will use when we put the bricks. We are preparing the bricks, which have been made by order to form the Obraduron. Among them you can see some bricks that have been cut smaller and that will be used to start the arch. The time has come to present the first piece. It is important to do it accurately because the correct placement of this piece is the key to obtaining a symmetrical arc. We will start with the central part above so that the two sides are equal. We mark the center of the template in the center of the brick and place the brick on the template making the marks coincide. The surface of the template on which the brick sits is not flat. This forces us to immobilize the brick to prevent it from moving when placing the adjacent pieces. For this we have put two small wedges of plastic and another brick on top that gives a greater weight. This facilitates the placement of the following bricks. The placement of these first pieces is usually done with quick setting cement, but in this case, we have also considered convenient to make them with dry mortar prepared for 7.5. It can be done easily too. The difference is that with quick setting cement the template can be removed immediately and with mortar a Once everything is prepared, we cement the side of the brick and put it on, holding the one that is put in place so that it does not move. The reference piece allows us to continue. We try to choose bricks that are not damaged. We are placing the bricks one on each side to go forming the arch. Anyway you can make the arc perfectly working on both sides or in a single one. As we said before, the template is perfectly vertical. This allows us to use the edge of the template as a guide to align the bricks correctly. 
We must also check with the squad that we are not giving more thickness to one side than the other. The bricks have a smooth face and a rougher face. The smooth face must be placed downwards because it is the one that will be seen when we remove the template. In this way the two starts of the arc will be symmetrical because we started at the center and we have been advancing symmetrically on each side. There may be variations of a centimeter that do not matter. In the beginning of the arc the curve is more closed. This forces us to use narrower bricks that make it easier for us to follow this more pronounced curvature. Always check the level to avoid unwanted inclinations. We are filling the joints with mortar. Whenever possible, it is advisable to take the work as clean as possible, taking care not to dirty the bricks a lot. These are porous material and are difficult to clean. The bricks have been cut to the right size to fit well. In any case, it will be verified that the last piece has the correct measurement and that it leaves on both sides enough space for the joints. It is important that there is mortar in the joints between brick and brick and that they do not touch. To place the last piece we can only cement this part. We place the piece and press it against the mortar to fix it and leave enough space for the joint on the other side. This other joint will be filled with mortar using the pointing trowel. You have to be very careful with these arcs. If they are loaded with weight and are not reinforced, the ends can be altered. The weight in the center can cause the ends to be deformed. Before loading the arch with weight or removing the template, reinforce the ends by increasing the side walls. This will be seen in the second part of this video. Now we are going to place the second row of bricks, which will require more caution. We wet the first row well with the sponge so that it absorbs water from it. The bricks of this second row will be placed diagonally, at an angle of 45 degrees. For this we will use an angle conveyor that we will fix at 45 degrees and that will allow us to place the bricks diagonally and parallel to each other. We have marked the center in the template and we present one of the bricks we want to place. This piece of wood is a gauge that serves as a guide to place the bricks at a certain and constant depth. This depth is approximately 12 mm. And with the angle conveyor I get the inclination of the piece. Observe that if you put the brick guided by the view is very difficult to guess. However, with the protractor and starting from the center mark, we mark the correct position of the piece. Now we mark the inclination of 45 degrees coming out of the center that will serve us to place the piece.
This orientation of the bricks of the second row diagonally is a decorative detail of this elliptical arch. With this same technique we will make other arcs in which the second row will be placed in different ways, which will allow us to choose between them. We have already put the mortar to place the first piece. You have to put it very precisely to serve as a reference or guide in the placement of the following. In the image you can see the wood that enters over the bricks of the first row and indicates the depth to which the piece must be placed. This has to be completely vertical, but the following ones follow the inclination of the arch. This inclination, as will be seen later, we will check with a small tile that serves as a square. It is important to follow the curve that marks the first row of bricks. We also use gauges or plastic guides for the joints, both vertical and horizontal. It can be guided by sight, but it is more effective to use the separators. We present the second brick. This piece is easier than the first, but you have to try to place it as perfectly as possible, following the curvature of the arch. Keep in mind that the back of the piece is more to the right than the front, and therefore will be more inclined behind than ahead. Always follow the inclination of the arch. At the beginning it is a bit more difficult and the most complicated of all is the start of the extremes. The excess mortar should be picked up with the pointing trowel to keep the area clean. We are putting the spaces or crossheads. This same template that we have made also marks the plumb line for the front, because it is supported by the template that is completely vertical. We have commented several times that when working with manual brick we must always ensure that they are well wet. Wet does not mean soaked, drunk but wet enough so they do not quickly absorb the water from the mortar. We are throwing water with the sponge to the bricks of the first layer to keep them sufficiently wet. In the image you can see how we are distributing the mortar well. It is easier to put the bricks without mortar on their side faces because in this way the joints are appreciated. Here you can see that the back parts of the bricks have to be lowered because otherwise they would be too high. Here we cannot check the level because it is already very low. You can see how practical the protractor is. The fact that the bricks are wet allows us to move them and adjust their position. In the image you can see well the mission that has this template.
It is advisable to always collect as much as possible of the material. Later we will fill in the joints above. It is entertaining to do, but once finished you will see an arch with a nice finish. We continue laying bricks, using spaces to follow the inclination of the arch. As we said before, the tile gives us the brick inclination. By collecting the mortar you can appreciate if you go well with the joints. If the joints were full you could not appreciate well if the width of the joints is maintained. The placement and depth of each brick must be verified with the template. When the mortar has enough consistency we remove the separators. Here the protractor comes to us from the opposite. But using it in this way also allows us to place the brick at 45 degrees. It is very easy to get lost and then, when you have everything done, it turns out that it does not fit well. Now we have put the protractor on the back so we can appreciate it better. Here we are already filling the joints with great care, using a piece of wood to not put our fingers. And so you can tighten the mortar more. It is necessary to tighten well with the tip of the trowel so that the mortar penetrates well. We use this scraping tool that goes very well to remove the mortar from all corners. We are collecting the mortar with the hand so that it does not fall, although a rendering tool could also be used. With this tool the bricks are scraped, because normally they are dirty and thus they are cleaner. It is advisable to scrape the corners overall so that they do not remain full of mortar. Normally a pot is used, but leaving the sponge on it goes very well because then we leave the sponge on and the brick absorbs the water from the sponge. Realize that every time I take a brick to put them in, I check them so they do not have broken or eroded edges. In case there is one, the defect is placed on the back so that it does not look so bad. This brick is missing some mortar underneath. So what you have to do is take out and rectify. In all the jobs that are done, if you see that you get confused or you have made a mistake or there is a small error, what you have to do is remove and rectify. You have to place them perfectly. Thinking about the final delivery of the bricks, which is the most difficult part to execute.
if we go placing the bricks using the spacers and checking their position with the gauge, the protractor and the tile, the result will be good. End of the first part. Video created and owned by Ramon Guadarai Pariera. Year 2018 video number 214 of my construction videos collection. 08328 Alela Barcelona, Catalonia, Spain.